Yeah, Joey, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You guys have, like Anthony said, you guys have been on some sort of tear the last couple of weeks, but I kind of want to rewind back to the first two weeks. You had two tough games. You played a tough 4-0 Rootstown team. You played a tough 4-0 JFK team. And you took some bumps in both those games, but you looked good at points. What did you learn personally from those first two losses that you were able to incorporate and come back with two wins in a row? Our, our team never gives up. We're, we're always, after that loss to JFK, we got, came back. Everyone prepared to get healthy, and uh, we just kept uh, working hard at practice. Our coaches get us prepared, and uh, we just made us successful these last couple weeks. How much did that Rootstown game really lock you guys in and, and hit a reset button almost? Because it feels like after that Rootstown game where you guys had a win in your grasp, you came back, you beat a very good Southeast team, and you beat them up, and then you get a good win last week against Newton Falls. So was there kind of a reset button hit after that Rootstown game? Yeah, cause, yeah, because we thought we we had that game, and then second half happened, and uh, we all, as soon as they took the lead, we just kind of put our heads down and then, uh southeast week we came out hungry and we didn't want to let that one get out of reach so we put up points quick and i want to talk from players perspectives too because i was really impressed how you guys were able to lock in so efficiently against newton falls after giving up that 99 yard run too and it's a tough thing to come back from those are momentum changing plays being one of the senior leaders, what are you telling your guys to? What are you telling your defense after a play like that to try to help them stay locked in? Because you guys were still in that ball game and you ultimately came out on top. I just, just tell them to forget about it and move on to the next play. And uh, our coaches preach that too. And uh, we can't let that play get to our head because that's just going to bring us down and not put us on top. And we uh, put it behind us and we got right back to work. Last year, you were one of the guys that got a thousand pass yards, a thousand rush yards. It's hard to one up that, but great players always find ways to get better. What were some of your goals personally for the season, and what were some of the ways that you wanted to improve your game going into your senior year? Um, to, I wanted to uh, get my footwork right, and uh, I want to take this. I want to take our team to the playoffs, and uh, it hasn't been ha- haven't been here in champion for a while. And uh, we're trying to change the program, make a new culture here. And uh, that's that's one of my main goals is to make the playoffs. And I got my brothers around me to help me. I appreciate you trying to take care of the brothers that are around you too. Because when, when you were reached out to, you were – you were adamant about, we need to bring on Nick Vesey too. And I mean, looking at what Vesey's done, he's been up there with the rushing yards, just under 500 tops and receiving yards as well. He's been one of the top guys too. How much does his play help open things up offensively for you as a quarterback and kind of take pressure off your shoulders? It's amazing. Cause they have to key on it, key on him and my uh, talented receivers too. And uh, he just got moved there. week two against Rootstown and he put on, a, put on a show at the receiving spot as well, but he's just an all-around great athlete and just brings so much more that we can do to our offense. So we've seen Champion put out many different uniforms uh, throughout the last two years. What's been your favorite uniform that you guys have been able to put on uh, so far in your career? I like the uh, white on purple combo. I think that's what we might do right, but the the, uh, white on yellow and purple on yellow didn't look too bad, but those yellow pants, I don't know. (laughs) Well, <laughs> talking with Coach Conrad like we did before this season, he seems like he's very much in the analytics of the game. He's very smart, has a very high, high IQ with the game. So I know he's definitely talking about with you guys about this Vikings team being a, a trap game. 0-4 Vikings team, it's a team you can't overlook. What are some things you guys are talking about in preparation for this LeBray team tonight? Um, we just got to go in there, play our – play our defense that we put out for the week and uh, go out there and play hard and uh, don't let don't let the 0-4 record fool you because they're a pretty good team. And that's what we've been preaching all week. What coach has made the most impact on you throughout your career and helped you grow the most, do you think? I mean, all of them uh, helped me grow, but the one is Coach Naylor. He's been with me since I was a little flash down at the CLF program. He's been – my uh, quarterback's coach in high school, and he's helped me out tremendously with my footwork, helped me out with reads and everything. He's just been with me the whole whole way. 
Now you play both sides of the ball, and I know you also got an interception, some tackles. You're just you're Mister Do It All on the on the football field too. Uh, when you have to lock in defensively too after an offensive drive, is there a mind sh- uh, mindset shift that you have to go through from playing offense to defense? And if so, what what is that like to changing sides of the field and being able to play sides so effectively? I mean, uh, playing defense kind of helps me offensively, like to see what DBs do, like me. Like what I do, and uh, helps me read the defenses too. Because what I do, some people might do the same things, and it just helps me, like, uh, read the defenses. Playing both ways, you're you're able to do a lot of things. You're able to get tackles. You're able to get picks. You're able to throw touchdowns, run touchdowns. What is the best feeling on the football field? Is it a big run? Is it a big pass? Is it a big pick on defense? A big tackle? What gives you the most juice on the football field? I, I say. Uh, and that interception gave me some juice, but the the uh, big plays on offense give me a lot of a lot of hype and gets the team going momentumly. You just seem to go with the flow too, man. I mean, you're you, the stats week to week. It's it's whatever the team needs, and I and I respect that too. You guys looking to go three and two to set yourselves up too, and I mean that three and two record would set yourselves up nicely for uh, for second half of the season. What are some things and some takeaways you've had from this first half of the season two and two record ahead of this fifth game too that you want to look to improve on going into that second half? We just want to improve on uh, finishing games. That's what a big issue was last year too, and we don't want to have that issue happen this year. But it happened at Rootstown, but we put that game behind us. We don't worry about it. And that's the one big thing that we were focusing on is finishing those games like we did at Newton Falls. We finished that game really strong, and uh, we came out with the win. Let's get to know you a little bit off the field with some rapid fire questions. Um, if you could own any, any car, you know, money wasn't a factor. What car do you think you'd want to get? Ooh, um, probably I like uh, probably a Lamborghini Huracan. Those pretty sweet rides. What's the go-to color? Like, what's the best color on a car? A Carolina blue. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Um, what or what's one thing that you spend a lot of money on that you probably shouldn't? Uh, definitely uh, random sports equipment set. Like I have a bunch of cleats in my locker. Probably uh, spend money on those. But yeah. Are you superstitious with your cleats? Are you like, if I wear this one and we win, I got to keep these ones on until we lose? Uh, so for practice, for week to week, I have like a pair of just regular cleats, and I just wear those. And then I, for games, I bring out, like, those bright orange ones. I haven't taken those off, so we're going like, to with those on. So I got to keep those ones. Do you have any other, like, superstitions or routines pregame that you have to stick to? For me, the, I don't like to listen to music for pregame. I like to be uh, quiet. I like to stay focused. I don't like anything in, uh, making noise around me. So uh, when you do listen to music, what's your personal playlist look like? Uh, probably just a bunch of, uh, rap, uh, like Polo G, all that. Do you have any, like, guilty pleasure songs that, like, maybe not, not the coolest to listen to, but you still bang to them? Uh, Kings and Queens by Ava Max. So it's a pretty good one. <laughs> what about kind of guilty pleasure desserts? What kind of things do you like to put in your body when you're treating yourself? Oh, uh, I do that on a daily basis. Put brownies, cookies, uh, every day. Uh, who makes the best dessert? Ooh, probably my uh, grandma. She mm. makes some no- good no bake cookies. They're pretty good. What teammate has the best house to hang out at? Uh, we always go to Nick's house. We always go there just chill and watch uh, football and uh, and just chill out with the boys. His parents really, his parents are really cool too. The um when you watch football, what, what team are you really the most passionate about watching? Um, they're really not on TV as much. Coastal Carolina, that's my favorite team to watch. They really? Run, yeah, they basically run the same offense we do, and just uh, look at what they do. But Ohio State, I mean, hometown team, home state team, and uh, yeah, they're pretty fun to watch. So, did you fall in Coastal Carolina because they ran the same offense as you, and you started to watch them? Is that how it started? Um, that and their quarterback, Grayson McCall, he's fun to watch. And, uh, he's basically like me, I, I think. <laughs> he's, 
name dropping Chanticleers. I like it. Oh, yeah. um, when you when you look at uh, some of the role models that you've had over your life, who what names kind of stick out to you? Um, definitely uh, my parents. They keep me passionate, keep me motivated to do stuff. Uh, they make me go out and work hard. Make me make me work around the house. Make me a gentleman. And make me the person who I am today. That's on a personal level, but what about uh, maybe in, in the uh, athlete level? What what kind of pro athletes do you look at and try to model your game after? I like Braxton Miller. He's my all-time favorite player. I love him a lot. <laughs> That's a, I like it. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. I can dig it. Jerry. Uh, one, yeah, one I? yeah, yeah. I wanted I wanted to ask too because this this is interesting. I want to always I like to ask too though the multiple sport athletes because you're in your senior year. I know you play basketball. You're you're into baseball too. You play all the sports, but this is the the first of your last seasons right at the high school level. How's the feeling like going into senior season now, realizing that it's the last of the first? And what are some future goals I should say after uh, after this season with uh, the champion? Well, it's a uh... It's going to be sad. I mean, going into the last season thinking it's uh, your last year playing high school uh, sports, I mean, it's uh, going to be a feeling lifted off your shoulders. But I'm going into college and I got four more years to play. So, All right, Joey, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, good luck tonight and best of luck the rest of the season. We look forward to talking to you again real soon. All right, thank you.